Let's stand. Let's have prayer. Our Father, our Father, which art in heaven, the joy of heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thy will be done on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven, give us this day. Give us this day our daily bread. Our daily bread, forgive us of our debt. Give us our debt as we forgive our debt to you. We forgive our debt to Lead us not. Lead us not into temptation. Lead us temptation, but deliver, deliver us from evil. From evil, for thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom and the power. And the power and the glory. And the glory forever. Forever. Amen. Amen. Quam Yasharela. Quam Yasharela. Quam Yasharela. Quam Yasharela. Quam Yasharela. Quam Yasharela. Rise, Israel. You may be seated. We want to thank each and every one today for this blessed Sabbath day. We're coming to you live. The gathering in Jordan. I'm Elder Lashawan, and to my left is Brother Mashan. Here with the Saints. We want to thank each and every one for. Tuning in wherever you are, whether you're here in Jordan or you over uh, back in the east, I mean, I'm sorry, in the west, back in America. You may just pat my head out. Um, we want to thank you for being here today. We want to thank the Most High for his many blessings getting us through another week. Uh, today, we want to talk about a very interesting subject today. Uh, today, we want to talk about uh, the subject that's very dear to me, and I think it's very needed in our nation. Of course, we have uh, some people with some confusion. And we want to make some things very understood and very clear according to the Bible. Certain things we should do and should not do when it comes to being uh, equally yoked. So we want to talk about being equally yoked. So today is don't be unequally yoked. And we can look at it from several standpoints. We can look at it from uh, dealing with uh, many things between spiritual brothers, uh, to uh, friendship, to being yoked with the world, all the way up to uh, being uh, unequally yoked when it comes to marriage. So we want to touch on this subject because there seems to be a great need for our people to hear this and to know what God said the most high concerning this matter. And sometimes we don't know because Esau has gotten us very confused and telling us that we, it's okay to be this person or that person, but that's not so according to the word of the Most High. So we want to talk about being equally yoked. We want to go to the Second Corinthians, uh, chapter number six, and we will start at verse fourteen. But before we get started, we just want to go to Second Corinthians. I want to talk about yoke. Equal, not equal means uh, not of the same quantity, value. Uh, the same ability or the same rank, You're uneven at balance or out of proportion. Now, what is a yoke? You need to know what that is because that's very important. Some people may or may not know what a yoke is, but a yoke is a piece of wood that is placed across two ox, across their shoulders, to bind them together so that they can work. And one of the things you don't want. Um, is to have two ox that's not equally yoked because one is going to pull and the other one don't pull. They're going to go in misdirections and they, they just don't work right. It just don't operate right. And so it is with the scripture. It teaches us that we need to be equally yoked. And that's what's wrong with a lot of relationships and marriages. They're not equally yoked. And not to mention the spiritual side and friendship and stuff. So when he calls us into holiness, he calls us to be separate, to be different, not to be hooked up with the world. And a lot of times we want to hold on to the world. But once you come into the truth and the knowledge of the truth, then you're going to have to separate yourself. And I know sometimes that's hard for us as a people, but we need to keep that in mind. So we want to be equally yoked. We want to be blessed by the Most High. Let's go to Second Corinthians chapter uh, 6. And we'll start at verse number 14. Give me a minute. Let me get that on screen. Second Corinthians chapter 6. 
We'll start at verse number 14. Okay, but you can go ahead and start reading, but I'll catch up. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Mm -hmm. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Don't you hold on 14, let me get to read 14, but just hold on. Okay. So it said, be, not, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship is there uh, is a believer uh, or a person of righteousness but unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And that's true. We, we want to make sure that we want to be with a, 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 a believer. Uh, a, lot, a lot of times, a lot of marriages, not now, but before now, and let's hope that it's known after, they come to know that they are Hebrews or Jews. Uh, once they are awake, that our people will uh, be uh, equally yoked. I want to make sure we know this because a lot of you are coming out now, and a lot of you uh, are single, and a lot of you are going to get married. And so you want to make sure that you are in the uh, following the, the the laws and the word of the Most High. You don't want to be following the laws of Esau, where we were in the in the United States and back uh, in the West. We were marrying any and everybody, and that's why we were having so many issues. And we also know that Esau caused a lot of problems for us because he had us divided, the men, Hebrew women, the men against each other. So we want to correct that. We want to make sure we do it the right way by the most high word. So uh, here we, we don't want to be unequally yoked with unbelievers. So if I'm believing that I'm a Jew and I'm believing that I'm awake and I'm believing this, the commandments and I'm believing in keeping the Sabbath, then my wife should be the same way. Even the people that I'm fellowshipping with. I mean, I can deal with the world, but there's going to come a time where their uh, quote-unquote religious belief is going to be different than mine. So there has to be a, a parting of the ways at some point uh, in everything. No, we're not isolated, in, but we are in the world, but we don't want to be part of the world and get caught up in everything. Let's go to Deuteronomy the 7th chapter, verse number 2. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse number 2. Deuteronomy 7, chapter 2. I mean, uh, chapter 7, verse number 2. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 2. Mm -hmm. And with the Most High thy power shall deliver them before thee. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt smite them mm -hmm. and utterly destroy them. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt make no covenant with them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them. Nor show, show mercy unto them. Nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter shall thou not give with all the promises and benefits of... Oh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. excuse me. Verse 3. I want to, that's okay. Excuse me, people. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Mm -hmm. Thy daughter mm -hmm. shalt thou not give unto his son, mm -hmm. nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Hold on a minute. So, okay. All right. So here we have it. He's talking and telling our people when we came out of Egypt the things that we should and should not do. He tells us here, he says, uh, that you should smite them, utterly destroy them, and you shall not make any covenant with them. Nor shall mercy unto them. Neither shall you uh, make marriages with them. You're not supposed to give your daughter to them, nor give their their daughter to your sons. And so this is this is the commandment of the Most High from the beginning. We need to make sure that we stick to these laws, that we do what He tells and told our ancestors to do, so we can bless and not get ourselves in trouble. We don't want to be unequally yoked. And, and I'm trying to serve a higher, and they believe in something else. I can't. That, that's not going to work. I call on the Lord. I'm going to just use that word today for simplicity. So we, we don't want to do that. Let's go to Ezra, chapter number 9. Ezra 9, and we're going to start at verse 1, read 1 and 2.
9. 9 chapter Ezra, verse 1 2. Ezra chapter 9, verse 1. Now these things were done. Mm -hmm. The princes came to me saying, The people of Israel and the priests mm -hmm. and the Levites mm -hmm. have not separated themselves from the people of the land. Hold on. So now we have uh, uh, the rule bell. I mean, sorry, sorry, Ezra, not the real Ezra, and he said these people, including priests, they have, they have not separated themselves uh, from the people of the land. Go ahead, bro. Doing according to their abominations. Doing according to what the people in the other, the other nations are. They're following them. They're copycatting them. That's why it's so important that we don't do this. Go ahead, brother. Even of the Canaanites. Canaanites. The Hittites. The Hittites. The Pesites. Perizzites. The Jebusites. Jebusites. The Ammonites. Ammonites. The Moabites. Moabites. The Egyptians. Egyptians. And the Amorites. And the Amorites. They get all, they find all these people. Read, brother. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves mm -hmm. and for their sons, mm -hmm. so that the holy seed have mingled themselves mm -hmm. with the people of those lands. Mm -hmm. Yea, mm -hmm. the hand of princes mm -hmm. and, of ru and rulers mm -hmm. have been chief in this trust. Hold right there. You see? Here Israel is saying, not only have they done wrong, but they, but they, but they mingled the holy seed. What is the holy seed? Children of Israel. That's why you have to stay to yourself because these other nations don't, they were not given and made as the oracles of the Most High. They are not the ones to go out and spread the gospel, the real gospel, the truth, okay, or the word of the Most High and bring the good tidings to the rest of the world. But only the seed of Jacob was ordained, created for this. You can't take a holy seed and mix it in with some of the seed. No. He defiled it. Not only that, here he's saying that the chief princesses and the rulers and the chief are the ones who are doing it. They're the ones who know better. So preachers, bishops, all the evangelists, all these other people, they know better. But yet they are the ones who have been doing this. How are you going to have, if the leaders are making mistakes and doing stuff like this, how, you, how can the people uh, themselves who are following these leaders get in trouble. That's why it's so important that we get it right this time and don't mess up. These are so called elders got to be right, whatever title they want to get themselves. They got to be right and they got to go by earth. So, this is not what I think. This is what most high said. Let's go to Leviticus 19 and 18. This is what the, this is what the most high is saying. So, we see here that our ancestors was making mistakes and 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 they would call people to do something. Don't make it right. And this is a fine example that the preachers were doing wrong. The chief people were doing wrong. The rulers were doing wrong. They was trespassing the law of the Most High. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 19. Mm -hmm. You shall keep my statutes. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind. Hold right there. You see that? You shall keep my statutes. Y'all shall not let your cattle gender. That means mixed with a diverse kind. Even animals. The most high don't want you to. Certain cows supposed to be with certain cows. You ain't supposed to be with no cows. Go ahead, brother. Thou shalt not sow thy seed. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not sow thy field with mingled seed. Thou shalt not sow thy field with mingled seed. See that? So you don't supposed to sow no seed field even when you plant. You're supposed to have them plant. You ain't supposed to mix the seed. Now, I know Esau don't mix the seed. But if you got it, don't you mix it. Don't you cross it. You're supposed to have pure corn with corn, pure be beans. That's the way you're supposed to put the stuff out in the field. Keep reading, brother. Neither shall a garment mingled of linen mm -hmm. and woolen come upon thee. You see that? N not only are you talking about the seeds and the animals, neither are you supposed to even mix the different garments or the, 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 the different material. You ain't supposed to mix that together. You can't mix linen with woolen. As you very well know, you've seen how do that. That's against the most high law. You ain't supposed to do that. Polyester apart, polyester with wool. Uh-uh. That ain't supposed to be that. It's supposed to be all of this, all that. But you ain't not supposed to mix that stuff together. So the most high is pure. He believes in pure seed, pure animals, pure lineage, pure bloodlines. Not this mixing and crossing over like Esau got us doing. Let's go to Nehemiah 13 chapter, please. Nehemiah 13, 
We're going to begin at verse 1 and read down to verse number 3. We're talking about being unequal, not being unequally yoked. Don't be unequally yoked. Nehemiah chapter 13, mm -hmm. verse 3. Mm -hmm. Now it came to pass, when they had heard the law, mm -hmm. that they separated from Israel all the mixed multitude. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. And before this, it like... No, I'm on 13, 1 through 3. 1 through 3. 1 through 3. Verse 1. Mm -hmm. On that day, mm -hmm. they read in the book of Moses, mm -hmm. in the audience of the people, mm -hmm. and therein was found written mm -hmm. that the Am Ammonite mm -hmm. and the Moabite mm -hmm. should not come into the congregation of the Most High forever. You see, they're, they're not supposed to come in. Even though they're out of color, they ain't supposed to be in our congregation forever. Read, brother. Verse 2, mm -hmm. because they met not the children of Israel with bread and with water. When we came to Egypt, they didn't meet us with bread and water. We was hungry and we were thirsty, and they knew some kin of them, and they did not meet us. That's why he said they ain't supposed to be in the congregation of the most high children. For Keep reading, brother. But hired Balaam mm -hmm. against them. But hired Balaam against who? Against us. Moab did. Keep reading, brother. That he should curse them. That he should curse us. How be it, mm -hmm. our power mm -hmm. turned the curse into a blessing. However, the Most High made Balaam, instead of cursing us, made Balaam bless us. And we're going we're gonna to talk about that. We're going to talk about Balaam a little bit. Keep reading, brother. Verse 3. Oh, that's okay. Hold on right there. Hold on. Hold that point. While we got it, let's talk about Balaam. This, this was the one on the donkey. The king sent for him. His name was Balaam. You can read about it. We're going to talk about it a little bit further down. But he was supposed to come at us. And instead of cursing us, he dreamed. I told him to bless us. And three times he blessed Israel. But he did tell him how to get us in trouble. And we'll talk about that. But he was hired. And in the end, he ended up getting killed by Israel. Now, Balaam pretended to be a certain prophet. And he had certain power. But they were not good power. They were wicked powers. And see, that's why you can't listen to these soothsayers and these people that do divination and witchcraft and stuff like this. I don't care what they tell you, that stuff is bad. I don't care even if they're trying to use it to do quote-unquote good. We don't use that. Period. And the saints need to understand that. And at some point, we're going to do a talk on that as well. About divinations and stuff like that, how to avoid that stuff and even that kind of conversation. Because that's not good. But this man was hired to curse us, but he didn't. He had the end had to bless us. And in the end, the Most High will make your enemy, your footstool, and those who are trying to go against you, they're going to have to bless you because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Go ahead and read, my brother. Verse number three. Now it came to pass mm -hmm. when they heard the law that they separated from Israel mm -hmm. all the mixed multitude. So when they heard the law, they separated from Israel all the multitude. So our people had to do that. When we came back, we had to do that. We had to, when we came out of Egypt and stuff, we had to do that. We had to uh, uh, separate ourselves. And definitely uh, uh, in Nehemiah's time, come back out of Babylon, we had to in, uh, separate ourselves and get ourselves together and, uh, and everything and, and mix multitude, separating them. Ezra talks about it as well. But see, the thing about it, you have to understand it. When you get like that with an unbeliever or, or uh, unequally yoked, that can become a snare. And it doesn't matter if you, you're a believer and you mix it with an unbeliever. I don't care how pretty that person is. Even with friendship, you have to be careful with that. Who you hang out with. You don't be unequally yoked with your friendship. Because once you come into the knowledge of the truth, they can easily get you mixed up in something that you don't have any idea. Especially with unbelievers. Any of that stuff like that is just sin. So you don't want to get yourself caught up in that. You just don't want to do that. Uh, we just don't want to do that. So we want to make sure that we are not mixed, that we are uh, with the children of light. Let's go to John chapter 3, verse 19 and 20. John 3, 19 and 20. It's important that we understand we don't want to be unequally yoked. We want to be, if we're light, we need to walk with the light. We just stay with the light. We don't want to be in the darkness. 
John chapter 3, verse 19. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and this is the condemnation that light is come into the world. Uh -huh. And men love darkness rather than light. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Mm -hmm. Verse 20. Mm -hmm. For everyone that doeth evil uh -huh. hateth the light. Uh -huh. Neither cometh to the light. Uh -huh. but his deeds should be reproved. Okay. Hold right there. So he having John, the most I'm sorry, uh, Yeshua talking, brother. And telling the disciples that it is, it, is, it, is, it is the condemnation that light is to the world. Why? Because when the light is something, guess what? Everybody can see it. They hide in the dark. You see that? And men love darkness. Why? Because they want to sneak around and do wrong. They be tipping in the middle of the night. Gambling, stealing, robbing, drugs. Why? Because they're trying to hide and stay out of the light. But the light has come into the world. Why? So that me and these can be seen. Anybody that's going to do something, they don't have to hide and sneak and do it. They do it right up front. Evil people are the ones who be hiding the dark and doing that. Everyone that doeth evil, they hate the light. They don't want you to be having a spotlight on them and showing them, selling their drugs, or doing their killing, or, or sneaking around on their wife or their husband. They don't want that. huh? Let his deeds be what? Reproved. Everybody can talk about him. Everybody can, can, can put out there. Everybody can, can get on his mama, his friend. He don't want that. No, he want to hide in the dark, but we don't want to do that. We want it to be in the light. We don't have anything to hide. That's why we want to be what? Yoked with the right people. You don't have to be ashamed when you got two believers together. Hey, you want everybody to know that. You want that. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 5, verse number 20. Isaiah 5 and 20. So you want to, you want to, whatever you're doing, to be, you ain't got nothing to hide. Not the real children of the Most High. No, we don't do that. 5 and 20. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good. Woe unto them that call evil good. And good evil. And good evil. That put darkness for light. Put darkness for light. And light for darkness. You see that? Woe unto them. You got a lot of them out there. They, you can be the sweetest and nicest old person. They're going to talk about you and call you evil. They're going to lie on you. They're going to flip everything around and make out like you're the bad person. We're living through this right now. What is America doing to the children of Israel right now? Huh? They're doing the same thing to us right now. They're going to call the terrorists and everything else eventually. They're going to put you on there. They're going to lie on you. Why? Because you're living right. Because you are a child. You say you're a real Jew. Real Hebrew. Real Israelite. You are the children of the book. And because you know the truth and you're living the truth and you out there, you ain't there hustling, selling your back. You ain't committing fornication, adultery. You ain't selling drugs. You're not running anybody. You're not doing any of these uh, bad, evil things. You're keeping the Sabbath. You're keeping the commandments. But they're going to try to make you out to be a bad person. But we need to avoid this kind of stuff. War on them. The Most High is warning them. See? He's giving them a warning. And so it is with us. We have to be very careful. Finish the rest of the verse, brother. That put bitter mm -hmm. for sweet uh -huh. and sweet for bitter. Thank you. So here we have it. Once again, they flip-flopping, calling good, bad, bad, good, light, dark, dark, light, bitter, sweet, and sweet for bitter. It's a shame, but it happens all the time. That's the way of the world. We're going to go back to Corinthians now. 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. Let's begin at verse 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 15. Mm -hmm. And what concord has Yeshua with Bala? Mm -hmm. Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Mm -hmm. Hold on. Okay. And what concord hath uh, have Yeshua with Belial? Or what path part had he that believed with an infidel? There is no part. There's no part of Yeshua with Belial. Who I am? He represents the devil. Evil men are all referred to in the book as serving Belial or Baal. And that's the devil. There is no relationship. God will refer to him. And anytime you see that, you, you, you know that. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 5. 
First Samuel chapter five. We're gonna be in at verse number two. First Samuel five and two. First Samuel chapter five, verse two. And mm -hmm. when the Philistines took the ark of the Most High, mm -hmm. they brought it into the house of Dagon uh -huh. and set it by Dagon. Here, here the Philist Philistines had with Israel and had taken the ark of the covenant. They brought it and set it in their place of worship. Read my verse three. Mm -hmm. And when they mm -hmm. of Ashdod mm -hmm. arose early in the morrow, mm -hmm. behold. Dagon was fallen upon his face mm -hmm. to the earth before the ark of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And they took Dagon mm -hmm. and set him in his place again. Hold right there. Now you have the next day when they come in there, their God, quote unquote, had fell down to our power, okay? Fell down to the ark, okay? What was he doing? He was bowing to it. He was worshiping to it. That's what he was doing. But they didn't get it. But I got it and I understood it. Why? Because he is. The most high, there ain't nobody else. He's the only one, the creator of the heaven and the earth. That's what he is. That's why that thing was bowing down to the ark where the most high come and visit the children of Israel. And what did they do? They took their God and sent him back up, put him back in his place. He done got fell all the way down in front of the ark, bowing down to it. Read my brother. Verse 4. Uh-huh. And when they arose mm -hmm. early on the morrow morning. The next day they rose. Behold, mm -hmm. Dagon was falling on his face to the ground before the ark of the Most High, mm -hmm. and the head of Dagon, uh -huh. and both the palms of his hands were cut off mm -hmm. upon the threshold. Mm -hmm. Only the stump of Dagon was left to him. So once again, the next day, he don't bow down again, and this time his head is cut off, his hands are cut off, and he and 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 and, and, and he's bowing down to. Him. Only thing was left was his body. That's why you don't want to be unequally yoked. The Most High is not going to share his throne with no other idols, no other G.O.D.s. That's all he is to it. Anything else will have to do what? Bow down to him. Or he want to do what? Destroy it. That's what he want to do. That's what he's showing here in San. Exactly what he's showing. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 20. 1 Corinthians 10, verse number 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, mm -hmm. verse 20. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, mm -hmm. they sacrifice to devils. You hear that? The things that the Gentiles sacrifice to, they sacrifice to devil. So they run out, when they run out doing them blood sacrifices, cutting heads of chickens and animals and all that kind of stuff, even when they're doing stuff with these babies, they be, be sneaking and stealing and capturing. They're doing it unto devils. That's what I want to read, my brother. And not to the most high. And not to the most high. And I not that ye should have fellowship with devils. I don't want you to be even bothered with them. I don't want you around them. I don't want you associating with them. As a child of the most high, you don't even be with people. Don't deal with them. Keep going, brother. Verse 21. Uh-huh. Ye cannot drink the cup of the most high. You can't take this word that I'm giving you. That you shall you bought down to heaven and drink of the most high's cup. Go ahead, brother. And the cup of devil. The cup of the world. You can't do that. The stuff they doing, what they drinking, and how they acting. You can't drink out the same. You can't drink the Most High's cup. And they keep reading, brother. You cannot be partakers of the Most High's table. Uh huh. And of the table of devils. You ain't got no business talking about taking communion, taking the word, and then going out in the world and doing all this stuff these devils doing, acting the way they acting, eating, drinking, and doing the stuff that they're doing. No, you ain't supposed to do that. Keep reading, brother. Verse 22. Mm -hmm. Do we provoke the most high to jealousy? Do we make the most high jealous by doing these things? Are we stronger than he? No, we're not. Hold right there, brother. So here we see, for plain and simple, what they do, the worldly folks, the Gentiles, and the mother nation, and the devils, we don't. We do ours to the most high. So we got to do it the right way. The, the way according to the word of the most high. Let's go to Acts chapter 13, verse number 4. Acts 13. Verse number four, do not be unequally yoked. What they do, your friends, your wife, whoever you, they, even if you dating a little bit or going to date, and you anticipate marriage, you better make sure that you are equally yoked with that person. Okay, how long you been knowing them? If they ain't in the word and you in the word now, and you they still asleep, it's not going to work. 
I hate to tell you, it's not going to work. I know that from my own experience, just talking, just trying to get somebody that I knew before I woke up to come on over. But it's not the will of the Father. If it's not his will, you got to leave it alone. You got to let him go. You got to let him go. Acts 13, chapter, verse number four. Acts chapter 13, verse four. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. departed unto Seclusia. Mm -hmm. And from thence they sailed to Cyprus. Keep reading. Verse 5. Uh -huh. And when they excuse me, mm -hmm. and when they were at Salmon, mm -hmm. they preached the word of the Most High mm -hmm. in the synagogues of the Jews. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. also, John, to mm -hmm. their minister. Mm -hmm. Verse mm -hmm. This is Paul and Silas. Keep reading. And when they had gone, I'm sorry, Barnabas and Silas. Keep reading. And when they had gone through the Isle of pa Paphos, mm -hmm. they found a certain sorcerer. They found a sorcerer there. A false prophet. A false prophet? A Jew. A Jew. Whose name was Bar Jesus. Bar Jesus. Yeah, Bar Jesus, a false prophet. That's why you have to be careful with all these people that call themselves some prophets. He was a sorcerer. False prophet. Yeah, a lot of people to be a monk act like they know this, they know that. Uh uh. Uh uh. Go by what the scripture tell you. Those that really know the light, those that really are in the earth, those who really know the truth. Keep reading, brother. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. Which was the which was with the deputy mm -hmm. of the country. Mm -hmm. Sir Gaius, mm -hmm. Paulus, mm -hmm. a prudent man. Sergius Paulus, prudent man. Keep reading. Who called for Barnabas. Barnabas and mm -hmm. Saul. And Saul. And desired to hear the word of the Most High. He wanted to hear the word of the Most High. He wanted to hear the word of the sorcerer, the soothsayer, the so-called prophet, false prophet. Go ahead, bro. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. But Elymas, mm -hmm. the sorcerer. Mm -hmm. For so is his name mm -hmm. interpretation. Uh -huh. Which stood then mm -hmm. seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. So he was trying to talk to the deputy, trying to convince him, trying to trying to withstood Thomas and Saul. Trying to come up. See, we're telling the truth, and you preaching the truth, and you living the truth. People are gonna come up against you. These false prophets, these so-called uh, spiritual people. Okay? But here you can plain to see this fella. Oh, he knew he knew what he would been doing, making money and everything else in good stead. But he was sneakily. When the real ministers come up, when the real preachers come up, when the real elders come up, when the real bishops come up, when the real whatever title they have come up, you're going to know it. You're going to know it. You're going to know by they, the way they live, what they say, what they do, when they pray, you're going to feel something. And that should be the Holy Spirit. They should do it for the love of the of the word of the most high. Not for money, not for filth, not for fortune and fame, for none of that. Do it because it's the right thing to do and most you love it. You must do that. You must do that. And if it costs your life, so be it. Keep reading, brother. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. Then Saul, uh -huh. who also is called Paul, mm -hmm. Filled with the Holy Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. set his eyes on him. He set his eyes on this false preacher, this sorcerer, this this, this lying supposed prophet. You see, that you have to face him. You have to deal with this kind of stuff. You don't you don't back down. You don't you don't get in the corner. Don't shake. You got the power of the Most High with you, and you have to confront these demons and these false spirits head to head, and let them know you ain't afraid of them. They can't do nothing to you. Keep reading, brother. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. And said, O full of all subtlety. Mm -hmm. and all, go ahead. And all mischief. Mm -hmm. Thou children of the devil. Mm -hmm. Thou enemy of all righteousness. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Wilt thou not see to pervert the right ways of the Most High? In other words, here you are, you slick Rick. Here you are, you little devious uh, little devil. You, you up here, uh, you're the enemy of righteousness. You're the enemy of the Most High. You're tricking all these people. Won't you see, cease trying to pervert these people from the ways of the Most High? You're going to cease. Keep reading, brother. And now, mm -hmm. behold, the hand of the Most High mm -hmm. is upon thee, mm -hmm. and thou shalt be blind. You're going to be blind. You ain't going to be able to see. Naturally, you ain't going to be able to see. You're already not seeing anyway spiritually. But now, he's going to put your eyes out for a period of time. Read, brother. Not seeing the sun for a season. Not seeing the sun for a season. Keep reading, bro. And immediately there fell on him uh -huh. a mist and a darkness. Uh huh. And he went out and he went about mm -hmm. seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Now he's blind, showing sure up. Blind spiritual. Now he's blind physically. You can't play with the word. 
You can't mess with the word. You can't be fooling with the most high people and leave them to hell and brimstone and fire and you think you ain't going to have no consequences. You don't know what he's going to do to you. You may even, he may do a whole lot of things before you even leave off this earth, before you die and end up going to hell. So all these so-called ministers of the most high who leave his people, you better cut, cut that out. You better do it the right way. Keep reading, brother. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. Then the deputy, when he saw that what was done, uh -huh. believed, mm -hmm. being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Oh, right there. The deputy, who he was Paul and Barnabas was talking to, who he, the other uh, false sorcerer kept blocking, when he saw what the power of the Most High did by blinding him, and blinding him for a season, he realized, he knew there was something about the word. The truth will set you free. They can fool all these other people because they don't know the difference. When a real believer come, and when the real truth come, you can't fool the most highest people. You can't keep them hid. You can't keep them tied down and in a corner. You're going to know it because the Holy Spirit is going to build it to them. So I tell my brother, these people who got you tied up and bound and tell you don't flee, you better flee. Don't pay no attention to no people. You don't need nobody to lead you but the word of the most high. You trust the word. The word said flee, flee. It'll tell you, the Holy Spirit, when the time comes, it'll lead you and guide you. And he'll tell you to acknowledge him in all your ways. And he will do what? Direct your path. So now you've got to stretch out on faith and trust his word and do what it tells you to do. And here we see where this brother had been fooling the people. And when the real ministers came, Paul and Barnabas, he was trying to keep the, uh, the deputy from knowing the truth. And in the end, he ended up being blind from up physically. And he was already blind spiritually. Don't play with the word of the Most High and don't play with his people because they're not anything to play with. And that's a warning to, to the devil and his voice too. They need to know that. That's a warning because this ain't no game. We're awake and we know what's going on now. We know what's going on. And this thing is very, very serious. Let's go to the book of St. Peter, chapter number two. Days of playing and hiding in the dark and stuff, those days are over. They over. You can see plain as day what's coming. Y'all know it and we know it too. For the longest, the most high children will not wait. As he talked about it in the book of Zephyr, but they're awake now, the real ones, they know what's coming. And y'all know too. Those who, are, who who got the books and done hear them from the rest of the world. The rest of the world gonna see in a minute too to see what's coming. Second Peter two and fifteen. Peter chapter 2 verse 15 which have forsaken the right way mm -hmm. and are gone astray mm -hmm. follow the way of Balaam mm -hmm. the son of Bozar uh -huh. who loved the wages of unrighteousness mm -hmm. but was rebuked for his iniquity mm -hmm. the dumb ass speaking with the man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet hold right there so here we have it again talking Balaam the son of Bezor who loved what the wages of unrighteousness it's the same one he was talking about earlier in the earlier scriptures. He got paid a lot of money. He went from kingdom to kingdom to kingdom. And eventually he got killed when we were fighting against Moab. He ended up dying and we ended up taking him out. But he loved money. And why do false preachers go there the most majority of the time? It's about money. They run from kingdom to kingdom, church to church, about money. They're not, they, have, they, have, they don't care nothing about right and wrong. They care about trying to get some money. And not only that, even the donkey, the donkey talked to him when he was beating the donkey, trying to go out. The donkey saw the angel, and the angel was getting ready to kill him. Cut his head off. The donkey said, why are you beating me? Why are you treating me this way? Can't you see that angel up there with that sword in his hand? This brother, he wasn't caring about the truth. But when the time came, when he went against the real people of the Most High, oh, he did those other nations. He was praying on them all the time, casting spells on them all the time. But when the real people came along, he couldn't do that because he knew. And that devil knows too. He knows the real people. He knows the, play, the, the, the ones that's playing false and the ones that's real. And so Balaam knew the same thing. And this is what you have here. Let's back. Let's go to. Uh, let's go back to uh, uh, the uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. 1 John 2 and 15.
First John chapter two verse fifteen. Mm -hmm. Love not the world, mm -hmm. neither the things that are in uh, that are in the world. Mm -hmm. If any man love the world, mm -hmm. the love of the Father is not in him. Mm -hmm. Hold right there. Love not the world, neither the things that are in it. For any man of the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16. For all that is in the world, mm -hmm. the lust of the flesh, uh -huh. and the lust of the eyes, uh -huh. and the pride of life, uh -huh. is not of the Father, mm -hmm. but is of the world. Hold right there. For all these things that he's talking about, all these things in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of, of the world. We want to talk about these things. We want to talk about these lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. What exactly is the pride talking about here? We want, to, we want to go with some of these things because this is really, really important to know these things, especially our people, because we got a lot of growing to do and a lot of cutting away to do. We've got a lot of weights and fat that need to be cut off us. We need to be clean. We need to be in the Word and have the Holy Spirit in us. Babylon has put all kinds of things in us that we need to cut loose and set free. We need to do that. So let's talk about these things. Let's go to Matthew, uh, the works of the flesh. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5, verse number 32. One of the things, first I want to talk about the adultery. That's the lust of the flesh. Matthew 5, verse 32. Matthew chapter 5, verse 32. Uh -huh. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, mm -hmm. saving for the cause of fornication, mm -hmm. causes her to commit adultery. Mm -hmm. And whosoever shall marry her at his divorce, mm -hmm. committeth adultery. Mm -hmm. Hold right there. So whosoever put, his way, put away his wife, except for uh, a fornication, they cause her to commit adultery. And anybody that married that woman, they too are committing adultery. And we got a lot of that. Some people got three, four, five, six, seven, eight marriages. And, and, and it don't, don't make any, I mean, why are you going from one person to the next, next, you know? Uh, it just don't make any sense. Why can't you stay with somebody? This is if both of you are equally yoked. Now, if you're unequal, that's a whole different story. That's why scripture said don't be unequally yoked. If you're a saint, you ain't got no business being stuck with an unbeliever, unless the unbeliever content to be with you, according to the book in Corinthians. We, we, we will talk about that, but as someone is out, uh, going to be married, and you awake now, you got to get with somebody who's awake too, because that unbelieving person, it's going to be pretty tough. Unless you've been married to them, you can get them to come on over with you. And that's a, that's a different story. You can do that. But some people are having, some of us are having a tough time getting that, that other person. If you're single, it's really going to be tough trying to get them to come over. Many people, they may tend to be a little more open to understanding the word and coming over because they got a lot to lose because they've already been married. They've been through the thick and the thin. And even though now one is away, they've got to convince the other spouse. going to take a little bit of work and hopefully the other spouse will own up to it and come on and do what needs to be done because we don't know. But we that are single, we definitely got to be careful who we end up with trying to get a single with another single person. we got to be very extremely careful with that. And so the lust of the flesh, you're talking about adultery. You can't just jump up and marry and then throw away just because you want to get rid of her or get rid of him. That's why the world's in the shape of this end. That's why the divorce rates and stuff is so high. So the lust of the flesh, one of them is adultery. Let's go to also Matthew, let's go to chapter verse 3, 27 and 28. For me. Verse 27 and 28. Verse 27. Uh-huh. Ye have heard mm -hmm. that it was said by them mm -hmm. of old time, uh -huh. thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh -huh. But I say unto you, uh -huh. that whosoever looketh on a woman uh -huh. to lust after her, uh -huh. hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. You hear that right there? So you see a lot of that all the time, men looking at women, lusting after them. Brother, if that ain't your wife, you don't need to be lusting after her. You don't need to be eyeballing, eye -gay, whatever term you want to use. You, you're committing a grave sin by doing it. Turn your head the other way, look around, whistle, do something else, but don't be staring at that woman committing adultery with eyeballs, and yes, you don't have to put your hand on her in order to commit adultery. You sure enough don't have to do that. Here it is giving us a great example of that. 
adulterer. Don't you do that. That's one of the works of the flesh. Other works of the flesh is fornication. That's usually between two single people or two people that's not married. We have a lot of that going on. Oh, any of that. People just jumping, dating this person this week, and next week they with another person, and then or the next month or two months. I don't know. All this crazy stuff. That's why you got so many diseases and problems. You can't do that. That's the flesh. You cannot do that. That's the flesh. That's the lust of the flesh. You can't do that. Then we want to talk about, let's go to uh, uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 21. Romans 1 and 21. What about another thing of the, of, of the flesh, uh, one of the uh, uh, works of the flesh? Romans 1 and 21. Romans chapter 1, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Because that, when they knew the Most High, uh -huh. they glorified Him not as the Most High. Uh -huh. Neither were they thankful, mm -hmm. but became vain in their imagination, mm -hmm. and their foolish heart was darkened. Mm -hmm. ho, ho. So here we are talking about works of the flesh. We're talking about uh, uncleanness. People that become unclean in the way that they think, in the way that they act, and what they do. They became vain in their imagination, creativity, doing, thinking about all kind of crazy stuff in their mind to do. This is dealing with uh, 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 perversion, not normal stuff, okay? This is when they do, uh, when they oppose purity. Most high want us to have purity in our heart. He don't want us to uh, be dealing with other stuff like that. Uh, uh, these perversions and stuff like that. We're not supposed to have that, okay? We're not supposed to have that. So, these sexual perversions and stuff like that, this is what he's talking about. And this uncleanness. Keep reading. Verse 22. There he go, coming up with that. Excuse me. Go ahead, brother. Blessing themselves mm -hmm. to be wise, mm -hmm. they became fools. Mm -hmm. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible power mm -hmm. unto an image mm -hmm. made mm -hmm. like, to, like to corruptible men, mm -hmm. and to birds, mm -hmm. and four footed beasts, mm -hmm. and creeping things. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. Verse 24, wherefore the Most High gave them up to uncleanness mm -hmm. through the lust of their own hearts. Mm -hmm. Gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own heart. To dishonor their own body mm -hmm. between themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 25, mm -hmm. who changed the truth of the Most High mm -hmm. into a lie mm -hmm. and worshiped and served the creature mm -hmm. more than the Creator, mm -hmm. who is blessed forever. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Quote verse number. Keep reading. Okay. Mm -hmm. Verse 26. Mm -hmm. For this cause, mm -hmm. Most High gave them up unto vile affection. Vile affection. This uncleanness we're talking about. Keep reading. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. So now you got this women with women foolishness, which is an unnatural use. He didn't design a woman's body to be with another woman's body. He designed a woman's body to be with a man's body. Keep reading, brother. Verse 27, mm -hmm. likewise mm -hmm. also the men mm -hmm. leave the natural use of the woman, mm -hmm. burned in their lust mm -hmm. one toward another, mm -hmm. men with men, mm -hmm. working that which is unseemly, mm -hmm. and receiving in themselves mm -hmm. that recompense mm -hmm. of their error, which was meat. Hold right there. You see, even the men, the men doing the same thing, burning the lust, going from a natural use to an after or uh, uh, evil use, a man to a man. Man body was designed for another man's body. Man body was designed for a woman. And they receive it in themselves that recompense of their error. So what illness or disease or whatever they get, it's going to met out to them. Read verse 28 for me, brother. 28. Mm -hmm. and, and even as they did not like to retain the Most High in their knowledge, mm -hmm. the Most High gave them up to a reprobate mind mm -hmm. to do those things which are not convenient. Hold it. We want to stop right there. So this is a, a example of scriptures on uncleanness. These are uh, uh, works of the flesh. That's what Galatians 5 and 19. So we don't want to be like this. We don't want to be doing crazy things. This is against the word of the mind. These works of the flesh here that we are talking about. Unequally yoked. We don't want to be like that. Men with men. That ain't equally yoked. Man's supposed to be with a woman. I mean, you got so many beautiful examples of equality being yoked the right way. Read, brother. 519. Galatians 5 and 19. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Mm -hmm. For the works of the flesh are manifest, mm -hmm. which are these mm -hmm. adultery, mm -hmm. fornication, mm -hmm. uncleanness, mm -hmm. lasciviousness. Hold right there. 
uncleanness and lasciviousness. And on that note, we go to, and you know, uh, uh, let, let's go to, uh, la la lasciviousness is, is lust. All you, uh, all, uh, all you uh, men and women can't keep your clothes on and eyeball and lust after somebody. Uh-uh-uh, that's what lasciviousness is. You lust and you look in and oh, I got to get out. No, 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 no. You get that flesh under subjection. Now that you know the truth, you can't be just a, a lusting after this person, that person. Close your eyes, meditate, pray, fast, do whatever you need to read the word. But you cannot be lusting after someone. That's righteousness. That's what that is. Lust or wantonness. Oh, I just got to have it. A good example of that was a uh, 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 joke. And part of his wife, how she was lusting after our Uncle Joseph. She wore that poor man for years. And you saw what happened. Caused her to be thrown in jail. In prison for years because he would not commit adultery with her. But she lusted, let, uh, let, uh, let the seriousness out of him so long until it wasn't even funny. Think the most high he had enough of the spirit and had been taught well by his father. And he never forgot what his father told him. That's what saved his life. Both spiritually and naturally. Bless Oza. And that's the way we got to be. We cannot be lusting and letting our flesh rise above the spirit. That's not what the Most High want us to do. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 14. One of the other things we want to talk about and lust the flesh is idolatry. You got a lie of the people. Even the saints have to be careful of what we do. And how we how we talk to people and and how we uh uh give people praise too much. You got to be very very careful of that. First Corinthians chapter ten verse fourteen. Mm -hmm. Therefore, uh -huh. my dearly beloved, uh -huh. flee from idolatry. Flee from idolatry. You see that? Flee from it. Idols. What is an idol? It ain't always a statue. Guess what? It's a car. It's a house. All you don't want to leave them because you what? You got idols over there. You were in your house. You worship them in your car. You worship them in your job. Those are idols. It ain't just a, a statue or a basketball player or a movie star. It's things. Those are idols. Flee from these things. Idolatry. Flee from uh, the practice of worshiping things. Most high say he's a jealous power. You don't have it. You can't put nothing else before him. That's not going to work. Let's go to Colossians 3 and 5. So, I, I, idolatry, that's works of the flesh. So, y'all can't come because of your house? Guess what? That's a shame because you ain't going to make it if you hold on to that house and worry about the house. You got to let it go. You got to sell it, get rid of it, get what you can get and get out of there. Read from brother. Colossians mm -hmm. chapter 3, mm -hmm. verse 5. Mm -hmm. Mortify therefore your members mm -hmm. which are upon the earth, mm -hmm. fornication, mm -hmm. uncleanness, mm -hmm. inordinate affection, mm -hmm. evil conceptions, mm -hmm. and covetousness, mm -hmm. which is idolatry. Covetousness. So you coveting what somebody else have, your neighbor's got a nice car, neighbor's got a, 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 a nice home, your neighbor got a good job. You coveting them or they get something that you don't have. When you covet that, that's idolatry. You can't do that. Even when you come into the truth. Let's say one of the sisters uh, get a good job and you don't have a job. You can't cover her off. That's idolatry. That's a sin. That's a sin. It had to be known. So sometimes people do things not being aware of. That's why I want to talk about these uh, 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 works of the flesh and 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 and. and, and other works of uh, lust of the eyes and pride of life and things like that. We need to know these things. We need to know them. Let's go to uh, Revelation 9 and 21. We want to talk about another thing that's very important to me is witchcraft and and, spir and spirits. Uh, all known uh, spirits. I don't care about that stuff. Some people try to say, well, you know, they can do that and use that to do some good. No, it's not. Either way, anytime you use divination, that stuff is wrong, period. I don't care what it's used for. It's evil, period. You don't use it, period. And that's work of the flesh. People call it, call it, well, I need a job. Well, go let somebody do this and do that. You can get a job. Give me this rabbit, all that kind of foolishness. No, stay away from that kind of stuff. Go ahead, brother. Revelation 9 and 21. Verse 21, chapter 9, verse 21. Mm -hmm. 
Neither repented they of their murder, mm -hmm. nor of their sorcery, mm -hmm. nor of their fornication, mm -hmm. nor for their nor of their thefts. Mm -hmm. So they didn't they didn't repent of none of these things. Now these men have been punished by the most high. He's telling you they're not gonna do that. All these things they've done, including their sorceries, casting spells and all this stuff, they still didn't repent after all the things that the most high let the angels do to them in, 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 in this chapter in the book of Revelation. They still did not. Why? Because they were just evil. You don't want to do that. That is the work of the flesh. Let's also go to Revelations 21 and verse number 8. Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. Mm -hmm. But the fearful uh -huh. and unbelieving uh -huh. and abominable, abominable uh -huh. murderers mm -hmm. and whoremongers mm -hmm. and sorcerers mm -hmm. And idolaters mm -hmm. and all liars mm -hmm. shall have their part in the lake of fire, mm -hmm. the lake which burneth with fire mm -hmm. and brimstone, mm -hmm. which is the second death. Hold right there. So all these works of the flesh, including sorcerers, are going to be burned in the lake and going to be cast in the lake that burn with fire and brimstone. You don't want to be in that now. This is once again works of the flesh. So I don't care how innocent people try to get you to get into this. Or oh, if you're in it, you better get out of it. There's no good. Anytime they're doing any of this stuff, it's all for evil. I don't care. It's evil, period. So that's against the Most High. And no child of the Most High, even if they know and been exposed or know about it, leave that stuff alone. Get away from it. And if people are not, uh, you, you know that they're doing that stuff, you, you try to get convinced them to stop. Or if not, just stay away from them. Don't be around them. Don't be around them. Because then, what, what's going to happen? They get mad at you. They might want to try to put something on you. So you have to be careful. And remember, this stuff, I don't care whether they try to convince you. Oh, well, I'm using it for good. No, you're not. No, you're not. Because anytime you got to go to that kind of stuff, it's not for good. Saul called him. I mean, Paul, the, the, the king of, uh, of uh, Israel, uh, called Samuel and he was asleep. And that witch got mad at him and said, you know, I don't know what to do. Or she didn't say, I don't know, dude. She says, Paul, when he woke him up, said, why are you waking me up from my sleep? Most high don't call me at home. I'm resting. And you calling me through a witch to wake me up. Even though he had lost the kingdom. And, 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 and Samuel had told him he lost the kingdom. It was taken out of his hand. He wasn't satisfied. And even though he called himself trying to what? Get back in the grace of high. What he did was absolutely wrong. When the Most High curse you, he curse you. When he bless you, he bless you. And can't nobody get that stuff off of you. And that's what he needs to understand. Instead of him repenting and just leaving it alone, he made the situation worse. He ended up not being blessed. He ended up dying in such a tragic death. He and his son, Jonathan. Let's go to uh, St. Luke chapter 23, verse number 10. We want to talk about another subject called hatred. Now, a lot of people say, well, I'm, I'm not a hateful person. You sure about that? If you if you if you just somebody malice and enmity, that's the definition of hatred. People can people can can dislike somebody and and, and 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 not really realize that you're really doing it real real bad. These things need to be brought out. Saints need to know what they're doing. They need to all these things. We got to cut this stuff loose. We got to let it go. Luke twenty three and twelve. Luke chapter twenty three verse twelve. And the same day, Pilate and Herod uh -huh. were were made friends together. Uh -huh. For before they were at enmity between themselves. Hold on, no. Twenty-three and twelve. Okay. okay. So that same day, Pilate, Pontius Pilate, and King Herod made friends together. For they were at what? They was at. So all of a sudden, what? When they had Yeshua. Getting ready to take his life, all of a sudden them what devils got together. You see that? So now when you're a child of the most high, you got to be yoked with your team. You can't be yoked over there with the people of the world. Because guess what? They'll turn on you. They'll get with their friend. You think they're your friend, they're on you. And the next thing you know, they ganging on you. You see this right here? Them two were at each other's throat. They're all and pilot. But all of a sudden, when it came to Yeshia, they got together. Hatred. He didn't like it. You see what that'll do? It'll make you become friends because they're going to get up on you. You got to be with the people that's going to be with you. You got to be equally yoked. That's what Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15. 
hatred. They didn't like this shot. That's the reason they did that. Ganged up. Them two got together. And they weren't together before, but they got together then. Don't be surprised what people do to come to you. When you're living right, they will go. Those who call themselves right and you and they're exposed, they will do that. They will gang up on you. And this is a fine example of that right today. Keep reading, brother. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, mm -hmm. even the law, the commandments mm -hmm. contained in the order mm -hmm. contained in ordinances. Mm -hmm. For to make in himself mm -hmm. a plain mm -hmm. one new man. Mm -hmm. So making peace. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. Verse 16. Uh-huh. And that he might reconcile both mm -hmm. unto the most high mm -hmm. in one body mm -hmm. by the cross, mm -hmm. having slain the enmity thereby. All right. So he is, he's talking about this, this, this enmity in the flesh, how it was uh, the law, how it was contained in the ordinances by himself. He, he, he did this and, and made this, uh, Yahweh did, in, in making peace. He did this and made it what? Reconciled back unto God. That's what he did. Hatred. They hated him. They couldn't stand him. They didn't couldn't, couldn't stand him. They going to stand you. We got to be very careful. Malice and stuff like that. And we don't let that stuff creep into us. As children of the Most High. We got to be very, very careful. Let's go to Matthew, the 10th chapter, verse number 34. Matthew 10, verse 34. Matthew chapter 10, verse 34. Mm -hmm. Think not I am come to send peace on earth. Uh -huh. I come not to send peace, uh -huh. but a sword. But a sword. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. Verse 35. Uh -huh. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father. Come to set a man at variance. This is what we're talking about, variance. Keep reading. And daughter against her mother. Uh -huh. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Uh -huh. And a man's foe shall be they, his own household. Mm -hmm. Hold right there. So here we have Yeshua telling them, think not come to bring peace on the earth. I came in not peace but a sword. For I'm gonna have variance. That means you're gonna be quarter, you're gonna have discord. You see, when you're light in their darkness, there ain't gonna be no in that house. I don't care what you say. You can try to have peace, you can work on it. But the difference between light and dark, but the difference between righteous and unrighteous. And so the mother gets the daughter, the father gets the son, etc. 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 And the foe shall be the shall be they of his own household, a man foe. So when you are saved and when you have the Holy Spirit in you, guess what? The people in your house are going to give you a hard time. Don't be surprised about it. You're going to have variance. You're going to be bitter. You're going to be quarreling. That's what it means, variance. They're going to be discord. So it can't be. Why? Because you got righteousness, unrighteousness, you got light, and you got darkness. And that just simply is not going to work. That's not going to work. So do not be surprised about that. So just get yourself ready. And deal with it, knowing that this is the way that it is. If they're going to convert, they're going to convert. If they're not, then you know you got to have to do what? You you may have to separate yourself from it. You may have to do that. Because you got to be what? Equally yoked. You got to be equally yoked. Unless you're going to tiptoe it pretty hard when you're seeing them doing something wrong. And you don't want your parents or your brother or sister to hell. You're going to try your best to what? Get them to do what? And hope and pray that they listen to you. Excuse me. That's what you want them to do. Variance. Let's go to uh, Galatians. Uh, never mind. Let's go to, uh, we want to talk about emulation. That's that's jealousy. You got a lot of that. Got a lot of that between friendships. Got a lot of that between uh, uh, women being jealous of uh, 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 other women and, and men being jealous of other men. Uh, emulation means jealousy, stirring, uh, striving to excel at another person's expense. You see, a lot of people are good at that. They love to talk and, and love to strive by knocking somebody else down. That's emulation. You can't do that. As a saint of the Most High, you can't do that. Let's go to Acts, the fifth chapter, verse number 17. You don't want to do that. You don't want to be knocking your brothers and sisters down, trying to make them look bad so you make you look good and, 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 and debating and all that kind of stuff. That's not. You don't want to do that. Or someone is jealous. You got This jealousy thing, we got to deal with. We got to get a handle on this. It's bad. Acts chapter 5, mm -hmm. verse 17. Uh -huh. Then the high priest rose up, mm -hmm. and all that were with him, mm -hmm. which is the sect of the Sadducees. Uh -huh. 
and were filled with indignation. Mm -hmm. Hold right there. So here we have them. They were they they were they were immolated. They were mad, and they was angry at at at, at, at the Shire, and they all rolled rose up, and uh, all of them were with him, and, and they was filled with indignation. And, and, and uh, I'm sorry, these are the, not 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 Ishaya, but the apostles. They put their hands on the apostles, and they put them and, and put them in prison. So they was mad. You can't be that way. You can't be like these people. You have to be very very careful. And see, they was angry because the apostles were drawing them working miracles and stuff, and the priests couldn't do what they was doing. The most high give people gifts. You can't be jealous of somebody else because they got a gift and you don't have that gift. You may have another gift. So we as saints, we have to be very, very careful of what we do. And, I, and, I, and we don't let that, 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 that jealous creature creep in on us. Yes, the flesh want to rise up. You got to beat it down. You got to buff it down. You got to tie it down. You got to put a weight on it, whatever you got to do. But you got to what? Make sure that you line up with the word of the Most High. Let's go to uh, Revelation 12 and 12. Revelation chapter 12. We're talking about the works of the flesh. And don't be yoked with it. Don't be unequally yoked. Revelation 12 and 12. Revelation chapter 12, mm -hmm. verse 12. Mm -hmm. Therefore rejoice, mm -hmm. ye heavens, uh -huh. and ye that dwell in them. Uh -huh. Woe to the inhabitants, excuse me, uh -huh. inhabitants of the earth uh -huh. and of the sea. Uh -huh. For the devil has come down to unto you, mm -hmm. having great wrath, mm -hmm. because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Hold right there. This is what we're talking about another one of the, the lust of the flesh, wrath. He's got great, great wrath, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. You see that? Fierceness. He's going to come out and tear up everything. He's angry. Wrath. You got to be under control. You can't be out of control like the devil. You can't come down and tear up everything like the devil, bust up everything like the devil, run over everything like the devil. Guess what? That's works of the flesh. If you can't control your wrath and anger, you got a problem. You're going to have to ask the most how to give you more spirit and, and more of the Holy Spirit and let me walk, teach you more patience and stuff. But you cannot let wrath be out of control. You can't be like the enemy, the devil, because that's of the flesh. Let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse 12. 2 Corinthians 2 and 12. We're talking about the works of the flesh. And don't be... Uh, with these, with these, letting these things take over and cause you a whole lot of problems and may even cause you to, to miss out on your blessing and, and, and salvation. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12. Chapter 2 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, when I came to Torah uh -huh. to preach the Shia's gospel and the door was opened unto me mm -hmm. of the Lord, mm -hmm. Verse 13, mm -hmm. I had no rest in my spirit mm -hmm. because I found not Titus, my brother. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. But taking my leave of them, I went thence unto Macedonia. Hold right there, hold right there. Thank you. Now we also want to go to uh, James chapter number uh, 14. I'm sorry, James 3 and 14. Here we're talking about on, on, on this particular uh, 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 lust of the flesh, we're talking about somebody uh, dealing with dispute, du disputing a disputation, a disputation, causing strife. There are a lot of people who like to call strife. They love to contest with somebody like they're smarter than, they're superior to. Don't do that. That's not good. Showing some superiority or an advantage. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. You just don't want to do that. Go ahead, brother. James chapter 3, verse 14. Mm -hmm, 3 and 14, yes. But if ye have bitter envying mm -hmm. and strife uh -huh. in your hearts, mm -hmm. glory not, mm -hmm. and lie not against the truth. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right, that's right there. So here we have again. You don't want to do that. Don't lie not, don't glory not, if you got this in your heart. You don't need to have no strife in your heart. You don't want to be disputing or trying to act like you've got a contest to show somebody you're superior to them. You don't want that. You don't want that. You want to have peace. That's what you want. Let's go to the book of uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 3 and 3. We're going to talk about another part. Now, I'm giving all these examples. These, there, there's, this, I think it's 16 or 17, uh, a lust of the flesh. I want you to know a little bit about all of them. 
because it's important that we get it right. That we don't be doing these things. First Corinthians chapter three, verse three. Mm -hmm. For ye mm -hmm. are yet carnal. Mm -hmm. For whereas there is among you mm -hmm. envy mm -hmm. and strife mm -hmm. and divisions, mm -hmm. ye are not carnal, mm -hmm. and ye and walk as men. Three and two. Okay. Ye are not carnal. Whereas there's among you envy, strife, divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? You say you ain't supposed to be doing this kind of stuff. There ain't no division. You shouldn't be envy of somebody else. You ain't supposed to be causing strife and division, arguing and fussing and stirring up stuff. You don't want that. You don't need to do that. We don't need divisions. You see that? A house divided among itself cannot stand. You got to be together. Unequally yoked. Even in your natural house with your wife, you got to be together. If you don't, guess what? Your house cannot make it. You got to make sure that it's, it's together. That there is no division in the house. Anybody that's married know what I'm talking about. You got to be together. You don't want no division. Can't sleep at night. Can't go to work happy the next day because of division. Disagreements. You don't need that. You don't want that. Strife and sedition. Nobody wants that. Let's go to Romans 16 and 17. Romans 16, chapter verse number 17. Romans chapter 16, mm -hmm. verse 17. Uh huh. Now I beseech you, brethren, uh -huh. mark them uh -huh. which cause divisions mm -hmm. and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. Uh huh. And avoid them. You see that? Anybody that calls division, here it is in the book of Romans. He said, mock them. Okay? And and avoid, I mean, mock them and avoid them. Stay away from them. If they're going to call divisions, then that's what you need to do. You need to run and get away from them. You don't need that. We don't need seditions or divisions. You don't need that. Let's go to Acts chapter 5, verse 17. We're moving along here. Acts 5 and 17. Heresies. We don't like that. 5 and 17. Acts. These are different lusts of the flesh. Different, different parts of lust of the flesh. Acts chapter 5 verse 17. Mm -hmm. a, then, a, a work to the flesh. Keep reading. Go ahead brother. 517. Then, then the high priest rose up mm -hmm. and all that excuse me and all they that were with him mm -hmm. which is the sect of the Sadducees uh -huh. were filled with indignation. I'll tell you what I think I've read that and it's the same thing I used that before yes. That's the same verse uh, you the same thing for another one as known as a, a heresies and stuff like that. So they was mad and they got together and they was uh, giving these uh, apostles a hard time. Let's go to uh, Matthew 27 and uh, 18. Matthew 27 and 18. We want to talk about envy. So we don't want to be doing these things here. We don't want these things, these different uh, uh, works of the flesh. We don't want that. We don't want this. A lust of the flesh. We don't, we don't want to be doing this. We want to be careful. We, we want to have a good idea of what these things are and how to avoid them because we want the most high to bless us. Especially once we come into the truth. These things should not be uh, mentioned or known to be among us. None of us. Keep reading, brother. Matthew 27. Mm -hmm. Verse 18. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. For he knew that for envy mm -hmm. they had delivered him. Mm -hmm. That's okay. So he knew because they, 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 he knew that they delivered him. Why? Because they envied him. They, they, was, they wanted ill will. They was jealous at the good fortune or the blessing of the Most High. I mean of Yeshua. So because of him being blessing the people and doing all these miracles, they delivered him for this reason, they're going to do the same thing for you. They're going to deliver you. Or they're going to be uh, uh, envious of you because of the things that you can do and the gifts that you have. So don't be surprised. But these are the works of the flesh. We don't need to be that way. So we have to be careful. Ladies, you got a sister that's good to know the word. Some of these sisters know the word better than some of these brothers. No need y'all hating on them. Some of these sisters have been out here working harder and longer than you brother. No need you hating on them. No need you trying to knock them. No need you trying to talk about they need to be silent. 
this, that, and the other. They got a mouth. They can talk. They ain't usurping no authority over you. Real man, don't worry about a woman being over him because you know no matter what, a woman never going to be over him. It's these weak men that worry about stuff like that. They delivered him because they was jealous of him. Let's go to 1 John 3 and 15. Another thing, murder. We want to talk about that. Because you got a lot of people that do that all the time with their mouth, constantly murdering folks. No, you didn't take a, a gun and shoot them. But guess what? If you're out there running your mouth and you causing the person a lot of problems, guess what? You stayed at what? Killing them. That's what you're doing. 1 John 3 and 15. 1 John chapter 3, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Whosoever hateth his brother mm -hmm. is a murderer. Mm -hmm. And ye know that no murderer mm -hmm. hath eternal life abiding in him. Mm -hmm. Hold right there. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. No murderer is going to make it in the hell. We know that's a fact. Cain did the first murder. He came from the one that did the murder. He came from the devil. And also Lucifer did the first lion. And Cain was lying too. So I'm telling you right now. Those type of people ain't going to make it. And don't let it be named amongst you once you become a saint of the most high. These are the things that we need to also always keep in mind. These are uh, lust of the flesh. As saints we can't let the flesh arise and be over us. We have the Holy Spirit. That's what's supposed to govern us and guide us. Let's go to uh, Romans chapter 13 and 13. Murder. And once again, murder also can mean uh, killing somebody, marring somebody else's happiness, murdering with your mouth, talking about them, saying something, spreading lies on them. People need to stop that. That's murder. You don't have to be a gun to kill somebody. You can kill whatever they're doing. Even stop somebody's business with your mouth and stuff. We don't supposed to do that as saints. We're not supposed to do that. Go ahead, brother. Romans chapter 13, mm -hmm. verse 13. Mm -hmm. Let us walk honestly mm -hmm. as in the day, mm -hmm. not in rioting mm -hmm. and drunkenness, mm -hmm. not in chambers mm -hmm. and wantonness, mm -hmm. not in strife mm -hmm. and envying. Mm -hmm. Hold right there. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. Drunkenness. I want to talk about that because that seemed to be something that some of our people are taking for granted and thinking it's okay to get drunk. Guess what? That's lust of the flesh, getting drunk. You can't do that. Once you know the truth, once you come into the truth, once you know you're a Hebrew, once you're keeping the Sabbath, once you say that you're filled with the Holy Spirit, guess what? You can't be getting sloppy drunk. I don't care if it is a, 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 a national holy day, okay, or international holy day, or, 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 or what's called a holy day, uh, known as holiday. You can't do that. That's a sin. No drunkenness. Brothers, sisters, no drunkenness. I don't care if other people want to do it. You're not supposed to do it. That's one of the lusts of the flesh or works of the flesh. Drunkenness. Let's go to Luke 21 and 34. I want to say that because I've heard of stories and I, it just it, it blows my mind. People can just do that and think just because it's a, it's a holiday or a holy day, they can just do any kind of thing that they want to do and then want to get mad when the people get on them or they're embarrassed because they just did something they ought not to have done. Well, don't do that. Don't embarrass yourself. Read it, brother. Luke. 21 mm -hmm. verse 34 mm -hmm. and take heed to yourselves mm -hmm. lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting mm -hmm. and drunkenness uh -huh. and the cares of this life mm -hmm. and so that day come upon you unaware so here he's talking and Yeshua talking to them take care of yourself and make sure your heart is charged and don't be doing other things and caught up with the world you're so drunk on the things of the earth and care of this life so that the day come upon you. The day of him what? The day of the Mo uh, Yeshua coming back. And all these uh, things that's going to happen. They come upon you unaware. You got to be not drunk off the earth. Or drunk off the care of the world. Or the care of this life. You got to be what? Sober. Sober spiritually. Sober naturally. You got to be keeping aware. And aware of everything that's going on. With you. 
drunkenness. Don't get drunk off of things in the earth. I don't care what's going on. Be sober. Be vigilant. Be alert. Don't get caught off guard. Have your oil in your lamp. Be ready to go. Don't be like them five foolish virgins. But have your oil ready to go. Let's go to Romans 13 and 13. I want to talk about one more. Uh, the last thing, which is reveling. Rips of the flesh or lust of the flesh. Reveling. We don't want to be unequally yoked. You got somebody that's doing all these things and you with them. You got to work on them. Are you doing it yourself? You got to work on them so that you what? You're equally yoked. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Once again, Romans 13 and 13. Mm -hmm. Let us walk honestly mm -hmm. as in the day, mm -hmm. not in rioting mm -hmm. and drunkenness, mm -hmm. not in chambering mm -hmm. and, want again. Go ahead. and wantonness, mm -hmm. not in strife mm -hmm. and envy. Okay, hold right there. So once again, I went right back to that verse. We don't want to be what? We don't want to be reveling and we don't be doing all this stuff. But we want to walk honestly. We want to do this. We don't want to be uh, carousing and, 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 and doing things. This is called reveling. We've got a lot of people who like to stir up stuff. Good at that. Don't let that be named once amongst you once you uh, is a saint. All right. We're going to go back. Let's go back to uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 16. We're going to begin. Uh, Chapter six, Second Corinthians chapter six. Go back and we'll pick up where we left off. Second, verse sixteen. I think it's sixteen. Second Corinthians chapter six, verse sixteen. Mm -hmm. And what agreement hath the temple of the Most High with idols? Mm -hmm. For ye are the temple of the living living power, mm -hmm. as the Most High has said. I will dwell in them uh -huh. and walk in them, uh -huh. and I will be their power, uh -huh. and they shall be my people. Hold right there. And what agreement hath the temple of the Most High with idols? For ye are the temple of the living power, as the Most High has said. I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their power, and they shall be my people. You see? Right there, that's very, very important. Let's go to Romans chapter 12, verse number 1 and 2. Romans 12. One and two. Romans chapter 12, verse two, verse one. Mm -hmm. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, mm -hmm. but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. Hold right there. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of the Most High, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto you, I mean, unto Him, which is your reasonable service, at least you should do. And be not conformed, don't be being compliant with this world, don't be doing what these worldly folks are be doing, but be transformed, be changed by the renewing of your mind. In order to be able to be changed, you gotta have, you gotta think a different way. You gotta act a different way, think a different way. Meditate what you do and what you put in your mind by the what renewing of your mind that you may prove what that is good and acceptable, which is the perfect will of the most high. You want to present your body a living sacrifice, your body as a temple of the most high. That's what we need to do. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6, verse number 24. Matthew 6 and 24. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Don't be equally yoked. No man can serve two masters. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one. Hate the one. And love the other. Uh-huh. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Mm -hmm. You cannot serve the most high and am. So that, that's plain and simple. You cannot serve two masters. Either you're going to love one and dislike the other. Or love uh, love. dislike one and love the other. No man can serve both the man or the devil and the most high. You're going to have to make a choice. You're going to have to make a choice. Go to Hebrews chapter 8, verse number 10. Your body is a holy temple. 
The Most High want to dwell in you. He can't dwell in a dirty temple. It got to be clean. Your house got to be right. He don't, don't, he don't dwell in mess. I'm going to just say it like that. A dirty house. It's got to be in order. If you don't like an earthly house to be dirty, how you think he want to be living in your house and you dirty? Or me dirty? He don't want to live in our temple if our temple is in order. It ain't clean and spotless. No, he's not going to live, he gonna live in no dirty house. Because what? Heaven like that. Heaven is order. It's clean. Go ahead, brother. Hebrews 8 and 10. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel mm -hmm. after those days, mm -hmm. saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. I will put my laws in their minds mm -hmm. and write them in their hearts. Mm -hmm. And I will be to them a power. And they shall be unto me my people. They shall be, and they shall, and, excuse me, and they shall be to me a people. Mm -hmm. Hold on a minute. Once again, here we have, by presenting your body and living sacrifice, the Most High want to dwell in it. Here he's saying, this is a covenant I make with the house of who? Israel. He didn't say the rest of the world or the whole world. He said only with Israel. I made this covenant with them. And he said what? He said, I will put my laws in their mind and write them in what? In their heart. And I will be to them their power. And they shall what? They will be what? My people. So once again, presenting your body, holy, presenting your body, a clean temple, a clean vessel, so that the Most High can what? Dwell in you. Let's go back. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians, please. I'm trying to do several things. Please excuse me. I know I'm kind of in front of the camera and away from the camera, so please excuse me. Uh, plug. I'm trying to deal with it. It's kind of acting up. I'm trying to make sure I got enough power in the computer. Go ahead, brother. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Wherefore, out of her, excuse me, come out from among her, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Hold right there. I'm going to go back and make sure that we emphasize the fact that the Most High want to live in our temple. His Holy Spirit want to live in you. You are an empty vessel. You like a bass. And what you put in that glass, what you put in your body, matters. You wouldn't put bleach in your body in the glass and put it in your body, would you? No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't put uh, peroxide in your body in a glass and, you know, and put it in a glass and put it in your body, would you? No. So why would you want to put dirty stuff or stuff that's poisonous in your spiritual body? You wouldn't want to do. Why would you want to let uh, all kind of sin and stuff come in your body? Drugs. Uh, Overuse of alcohol, uh, uh, robbery, cheating, lying, fornication, all the other stuff of the world. Why would you want to do that? The most high. If you put all that inside of you, then there's no place most high spirit to be in you. There's no place. He said he want to dwell in them. I will dwell in you. And I will walk in them. Walk, talk, sleep. That's why some of us, we don't have dreams and visions and don't have these things because we got our spiritual bodies. It's, it's, it's empty. It's full with other things that we need to get rid of. We got to dump. We got to clean ourselves out. So that he will what? Dwell in us. He got to dwell in us. That's why he said in verse 17, come out from what? From among them. Come out from among them. And be ye separate. And be ye, ye separate. Be ye separate. And touch not the unclean things, and I will see you. So all these things we talked about, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, all these things. We got to separate ourselves. We got to be equally yoked. Spiritually, naturally, we got to be the yoke so that he can what? He will receive us. That's what we got to do. We got to separate ourselves. Once we do that, he'll be with us. He'll dwell with us. And we want spouses and other people in our lives to be the same way, yoked up with the right people, friends, the right spouses. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. I'm sorry, verse 3 and 5. 2 Timothy 3 and 5. 
Don't be unequally yoked. To Timothy, chapter 3, verse number 5. Second Ch Timothy chapter three verse five, mm -hmm. having a form of godliness, uh -huh. but denying the power thereof. Mm -hmm. From such turn away. Mm -hmm. You see that? There are a lot of them got a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, stay away from them. You don't need to be around them. Those type of people. You you unequally yoked with them. If you are you got the power and you are living right. You don't want you want you you want to stay away from them. If they're not going to try to change and do what's right. Mm -mm. Stay away from them. You don't want to be unequally yoked. And so it is when you're dating. And so it is when you're getting married. The same thing. You got to get the right person. Let's go to Amos 3 and 3. Being equally yoked. Amos 3 3. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Can two walk together except be agreed? Can two walk together except they be agreed? No, you can't. That's why it's important. You're trying to walk together and you don't agree. You ain't agreeing spiritually. You ain't agreeing naturally. So how are you going to make something work? You ain't walking together. There's no way that's going to work. Just not going to work. So we have to be very careful about that. We have to be very, very careful that we are uh, we are agreed. And anyone that's, that, that's married or been married, they'll know, they'll know exactly what, is, what the scripture is saying. How can two walk together except they agree? Even in friendship, you have to agree. In order to be a friend with somebody, y'all have to have a lot of things in common. Because if you disagree all the time, ain't no way to be friends. That friendship going to crack or it's going to cease. No question about it. Equally yoke. Can't do that. Let's go to the book of Numbers. I, 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 this is so important. Let's go to the book of Numbers 36. And we're going to uh, close on, the, on these on the verses in Numbers. Numbers 36. And we're going to read this because it's so important that we understand the importance, especially Israel coming out now. A lot of single. You're trying to find the right person. You want to be with the right person. We don't want you to make mistakes. We want you to make sure that you're with the right nation and the right person that you equally yoke. You don't get yourself in trouble. We're going to begin at verse number 1. And we're going to read down to verse 13, Numbers 1 and 36. Numbers chapter 36. 36 and 1. Verse 1. Mm -hmm. And the chief, excuse me, mm -hmm. and the chief fathers of the families of the children of Gilead, mm -hmm. the son of Makar, uh -huh. the son of Manasseh, mm -hmm. of the families of the sons of Joseph, mm -hmm. came near and mm -hmm. spake before Moses mm -hmm. and before the princes, mm -hmm. the chief fathers of the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And they said, mm -hmm. The Most High commanded my Lord to give the land for an inheritance mm -hmm. by lot to the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And my Lord was commanded by the Most High mm -hmm. to give the inheritance of Zelophehad, our brother, mm -hmm. unto his daughters. Mm -hmm. And if they be married to any of the sons of the other tribes of the children of Israel, mm -hmm. then shall their inheritance be taken from the inheritance of our fathers, mm -hmm. and shall be put to the inheritance of the tribe whereunto they are received. Mm -hmm. So shall it be taken from the lot of our inheritance. Mm -hmm. Verse four. Mm -hmm. And when the Jew, and when the and when the Jew of the of the children of Israel shall be, mm -hmm. then shall their inheritance be put unto the inheritance of the tribe whereunto they are received. Jubilee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jubilee. Excuse me. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. Sorry. And when the Jubilee of mm -hmm. the children of Israel mm -hmm. shall be, mm -hmm. then shall their inheritance be put unto the inheritance of the tribe whereunto they are received. Mm -hmm. So shall their inheritance be taken away from the inheritance of the tribe of their father. Mm -hmm. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. And Moses commanded the children of Israel according to the word of the Most High, saying, mm -hmm. The tribe of the sons of Joseph hath said well. Mm -hmm. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. This is the thing which the Most High doth command concerning the daughters of Zephalim. 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 Zephal
saying, let them marry to whom they think best. Mm -hmm. Only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. Only to the family of the tribe of their father. They're supposed to marry only in this father's family. These girls. Keep reading, brother. Seven. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from tribe to tribe. Mm -hmm. For every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his father. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. And every daughter that possesses an inheritance in any tribe of the children of Israel mm -hmm. shall be wife unto the one of the family of the tribe of her father. Of her father. Keep reading. That the children of Israel may enjoy every every man the inheritance of his father. Every man enjoy the inheritance of his father. So in order to do that, you got to stay in your tribe. Keep reading, brother. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. Neither shall the inheritance removed from one tribe unto another tribe. Mm -hmm. But every one of the tribes of the children of Israel shall keep himself to his own inheritance. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. Even the Lord commanded, Moses said, so did the children of did the, the daughter. The daughters of Pronounce the name again. Zila Fahed. Zila Fahed. Mm -hmm. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. For Maha. Mala. No. Tisra. Mm -hmm. And Hogla. Mm -hmm. And Maka. Pronounce the name. Milka. You get it. Milka means Noah. That's all right. Put it. Noah, the daughter of Zila Fahed, were married unto their father's brother's sons. And they married into the families of the sons of Manasseh, sons of Joseph, and their inheritance remained in the tribe of the family of their father. These are the commandments and the judgments which the Most High commanded by the hand of Moses unto the children of Israel in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho. So what we have here, I want to make sure that Israel understand that you cannot go into another tribe and marry. That is against the law. If you do that, you're breaking the law, and also, if you do that, you're going to lose the inheritance. In order for each family to enjoy the inheritance of their father, they're supposed to marry within their tribe. So I don't want people to get it confused. they think, thinking, because now that they've gotten to know that they're Hebrews, that they can marry across, marry into the Hebrew tribe, into another tribe. You can do that, but that's going to be against the law. And I've showed you, and the Most High have given you scripture today about the seed mixing, and the cloth mixing, and now he's telling you about the Hebrews mixing, you can't do that. That's not the way that the Most High works. You want to be blessed, do it the right way. Otherwise, you're going to have a, something on your hand. With that being said, don't be unequally yoked. That's just all there is to it. Neither with those unbelievers. Also, don't be crossing over with the Gentiles, even with your own family. Stay in your family when it comes to man and woman, husband and wife. Stay within your own tribe. Do it the right way so that the Most High bless you. That's just the word. That's just the way it is. Yes, we're awake now. and We're learning a lot of things. This is part of the things that we have got to do also. And it's an adjustment. We've got to adjust. So Israel, do it the right way. You want to be blessed? Do it the right way. We've got the book now. We know who we are. We are the ark of the Most High. Let's do it right so that we will be blessed. No more following Esau. No more doing these things he had us doing, getting us in trouble, got his foot on our neck. And we got to cry and pray. And we don't even have our own nation, our own land. We got to leave our houses in captivity, coming to other lands, trying to find our way back home. I'm tired of wondering. I'm tired of going from place to place. I want to go home to where I belong. I want to have a place where I and lay my head and say, this is home. I ain't got to worry about nobody running me out of, giving me a hard time, or starving me out, or, or whatever. I want to be in my home, my land that was given to our forefathers. So let's do it right. Let's be equally yoked. Let's keep the words of the Most High. Let's keep the Sabbath and the commandments. And let's be blessed. That's what we want. We've been cursed enough now. We don't went through enough now. Let's do it right. Let's do it right. Let's be equally yoked and bless the Most High. And on that note, I end my talk today. I do always want to say there are some other things uh, that we want to talk about, but the time is spent now. And we want to be equally yoked and we want to be blessed. Thank the Most High. I'm El Elashawan. This is Brother Mashaun to my left. Thank the Most High for him. He's done a wonderful job. 
I know he's getting tired probably because it's a little bit long lesson today. We thank you all for bearing with us. But I fell to my heart that we need to talk about this and, and keep the saints strong and keep them encouraged. And let them know there is hope. Those of you that are single, like myself, don't be discouraged. Don't worry. Leave that stuff in Babylon alone. The past is the past. That's what, they, that's what it is. It's the past. You've got a new beginning now. Let the Most High bless you and do it the right way. Be yoked up. A lot of times things didn't work out in the past because we was yoked with the wrong person. So now we want to do it the right way, the scriptural way. With the Most High bless you. And thank you once again for tuning in for the to this broadcast of the gathering here in Jordan. Thank you. May the most high bless you.